So I just got done with my presentation and I did scientific research and compared like four or five different studies. So this is it. Hope you guys enjoy it. And let me know any thoughts of yours in the comments below or what your thoughts are on a high protein diet or on resistance training or coupling them or on the prize exercise program. You have to watch my presentation to know what that is though. So stay tuned and click the thumbs up if you like it. <laughs>
basically what when you are sitting in your chair doing absolutely nothing what you are um, burning and that is due to your metabolic processes and this is where muscle synthesis is occurring as you're even sitting in your chair um, after resistance training and that can increase this chunk right here. So the proposed mechanism is basically that so resting and energy expenditure is increased up to 72 hours, like I said, post resistance training, but the first 24 hours is due to something called EPOC, which is excess post exercise oxygen consumption. And that's due to all these things listed here, like elevated body temperature and residual hormone effects and everything like that. But after the 24 hour window, your increased energy expenditure is actually due to muscle protein synthesis, like I talked about, because it is an energy consuming process, like I mentioned earlier and that can account up to 20% of your energy expenditure. So that is a crazy amount, and that's why we should focus on this. So your pur my purpose and my hypothesis of this right now is to determine whether there are positive outcomes of coupling a high-protein dietary intake with resistance training on resting energy expenditure and muscle synthesis and body composition by reviewing the literature. Um, my hypothesis is that resting energy expenditure and your muscle synthesis will be increased, um, which will also lead to positive changes in body composition compared to just one or the other when coupling resistance training and um, high protein intake. So my methods were I used PubMed to search for my articles. I had 245 articles come up when I searched resistance training and protein supplementation. I filtered it for the past five years and that excluded 116. And then out of the 129, I excluded 121 because they are either unrelatable or they talked about other things that I wasn't focusing on. And so I used three of these articles for background information and a website, and then I also use four for qualitative analysis, which is what we're going to cover right now. So my first article actually focuses on um, protein supplement versus carb supplement, and they measured resting energy expenditure and RER, which is respiratory exchange ratio. Respiratory exchange ratio kind of shows you if it's lower, uh, if it's on the lower end, it's going to tell you that you're burning mostly fat, and if it's on the upper end, it's going to be showing you that you're burning mostly carbs. So if you can decrease your RER, that's good. It shows that you are burning more fat than carbs. So it was 10 recreationally trained men. Um, one took a protein supplement, one took a carb supplement, and this was before and during resistance training for four days. And they measured RE and RER. Basically what they saw is that there was, within the training period, 3.61% greater in resistance training and the amino acid supplement versus the carbohydrate supplement. And then RER was actually decreased in both, which is just great because it shows that fat was being burned. So conclusion is that energy expenditure can be increased higher when taking a protein supplement versus a carb supplement. And this is just the data shown in graph form. As you can see, the protein group consumed a lot more energy than the carbohydrate group. My next study um, also focused on the same exact thing. They gave one group a protein supplement and one group a carbohydrate supplement. And then they measured RE and RER once again. And they did the supplement 20 minutes before the resistance training exercise. And what they found is basically pretty similar, and that's the fact that there was elevated RE in both groups, but it was much higher in the protein group than the carbohydrate group. And then RER was decreased in both once again. So this kind of just shows that protein supplement can increase your energy expenditure much more than taking a carb supplement, just like the other study did. And then this is just a graph showing, this is a protein group right here, and this is the carbohydrate group right here. But as you can see, post 24 hours of resistance training, the protein group was much higher than the carbohydrate group. And then, this study was a little different. It had 18 young, untrained men, but instead of doing a protein supplement and carbohydrate supplement, they did just a general high 
high protein diet versus a standard diet, which was the high protein diet was 30% protein and the standard diet was 15% protein. Um, and then the length was 12 weeks, so unlike the four day studies, last, the last two, this was a 12 week study and they did a 12 week resistance training program and they did a high protein diet or standard diet. And they measured, instead of RE and RER, they actually measured body composition and lipid profiles and hormones. And so what we saw in the end of the 12 weeks was that the high protein group increased in lean body mass and decreased in body fat percent. And in the standard group, there was no changes observed, which is crazy to me because I feel like resistance training alone would help some of that. But um, the high protein group saw a lot of great changes versus the standard group seeing nothing. So they also saw a total ghrelin and growth hormone increase in the high protein group, which can be really great for increased energy expenditure and muscle synthesis and everything like that. So basically, in conclusion, this article came to that an isocaloric diet higher in protein is a lot more beneficial for your body composition. And here are the results, and basically this is all the numbers that you guys probably don't care about. Um, but basically the percent change category is probably what you guys want to look at. And in the high protein group, for body fat percent, there is a 10% change and only a 4% change in the standard diet. Versus, and then in lean body mass, there is a 2.4% change in the high protein group and only a 0.4% change in the standard diet. So that is why high protein diets are great. And then the last, um, the last study actually focused on something a little different than the other three prior ones. And they actually had 80 participants, almost 79, and they were inactive, overweight adults. And so there's three groups in this study. There's either a high protein group, there is a whey protein only group, there is whey protein with resistance training, and then there's whey protein with a exercise program called PRIZE, which was new to me, so I try to look it up to see what it was. And PRIZE is basically protein and resistance training, um, intervals, stretching, yoga, and Pilates, and then endurance exercise. So this kind of incorporates both cardio and resistance training um, and stretching into their exercise program. So basically one group was doing no exercise, just taking protein. One group was doing resistance training with protein and one was doing this prize exercise program. And what we found was they measured body composition and adipose tissue and everything like that, which adipose tissue is fat. Um, and as a result, we saw that all groups lost body weight and fat mass and abdominal fat, which is, um, shows that whey protein alone can have some effects. But only in the resistance training group and the prize group were adipose tissue decreased and fasting glucose levels decreased. So that shows that exercise does play a part in it. But actually the prize group lost the most body weight and fat mass, which shows that actually versus just resistance training, a combination of both endurance and resistance training can probably be the best and lead to the best body composition results. And here it is in graph form. I made a cute little graph of it. And as you can see, the prize group had the greatest significant results. Basically, if you guys haven't been listening to a word I said, if you guys tuned out, now is the time to listen because I'm summarizing everything I just said in one slide. And that is basically that resistance training and protein intake will increase your energy expenditure. And for the first 24 hours, it's due to EPOC, which is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. And the post-24 hour period, it's due to muscle synthesis increased. And that is why increasing your protein availability ability through a high protein diet can help that. Um, but we found out in the last article we looked over that actually a combined exercise program of resistance and endurance can actually be most beneficial. So basically, and of course this is important because increasing your energy expenditure will lead to reductions of body fat and improve your body composition in general. So limitations, of all these studies, there are some limitations, and that is that the small, they were like very small sample sizes. Some only had eight people in the study. Um, 
As you know, there's millions of people in this world, so eight people is a very small sample, and they could have completely different results than me or you would have. Um, studies also all focus on slightly different results when they measure things. Some measured RE and RER, whereas some focused on just body fat and body weight and body composition measurements. And then also, some of the studies were only four days long because they were looking at more acute effects, whereas some were 12 to 16 weeks long. Um, so I feel like we should kind of focus on longer studies in the future, and that's why I said for further research, um, just doing a more long-term study on the combination of both of these things and what effects that can have, and also um, determining if a protein supplement versus just a high protein diet in general has a difference. Like is there a difference? Is one more beneficial than the other? So my conclusions are that a high dietary protein intake coupled with resistance training will increase your resting energy expenditure and increase total protein throughout the day and just a protein supplement both have these beneficial effects. Um, but there is a possibility that aerobic exercise along coupled with resistance training is actually best versus just resistance training. So my hypothesis is accepted that it does increase energy expenditure. And application for the registered dietitian, basically as we go out in the field, this would be great because as we counsel athletes or even the overweight population that's needing weight loss, um, increasing your energy expenditure will lead to optimal body composition. So no matter who it is, this can be applied to because you can either be using it for weight loss in overweight people or for athletes to help them achieve their best performance. And basically the takeaway is that we need to focus on both nutrition and exercise as a dietitian. We can't just be focusing on just eating healthy and telling them to eat healthy or just exercising. It needs to be a combination of both because there's great effects in both of those. So now there's Q&A. Any questions? I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. Sorry for the lengthiness of it, but this is what you guys wanted is more of my school stuff. So there you have it. Click the thumbs up if you haven't already. Of course, subscribe if you aren't. And stay tuned to next time. Comment below what you want to see next here on Fresh Fin Healthy YouTube. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.